Good evening. Welcome to St. Martha Parish. Today we come together to celebrate the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We wish to extend a warm greeting to our visitors and those who have been away from the church for a while and those via broadcast. We are glad that you are with us this evening. St. Paul teaches us today that we are not to conform ourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of our minds. Let's think about this for a second and ask ourselves, are we being true to our relationship with Christ and living as he taught us? Or are we changing our ways of thinking and acting in order to be accepted by the people we are with at the time? If we are truly transformed by our faith, we will be true to Christ at all times. The special intentions for this Mass is Marie Chouvard. Our presider is Father Mike, assisted by Deacon Carl. Our processional hymn is Lift High the Cross, which is located on the front cover of your worship aid. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you've shown us the way to the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you've given us the consolation of truth. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, to be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said, Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends, it sometimes is the case in a work setting that an employee is coming to work every day, putting in a full day work, no issues of absenteeism or tardiness, but they're just not getting much done. They're present fully present, seem to be engaged, but it just isn't the output. When that arises, oftentimes an employer will invite the person into a time motion study. 
what exactly is the person doing at work? And it, it often is not, doesn't have to be an adversarial study. Sometimes the employee is just as frustrated as the employer. But sometimes you just have to take a look. What, what's the person doing? What tasks are being done? In what order? Um, how is the day being triaged? What elements are off task? And it needn't even be about working harder. It can be about working better. An employee who never takes any breaks ever might be less productive than someone who occasionally stops, has a cup of coffee, walks a few steps, comes back, In our own personal lives, too, sometimes we need to make that sort of an examination, that sort of a study. Um, if our personal life, if our family life is going sideways, uh, sometimes we can start with things as simple as do we get enough sleep? What are we eating? Is there any recreation here? Is there Stress reduction. We getting out for some fresh air. If we look closely at our lives, most of us, not all of us, but most of us are removed from the farm and the factory. So for most of us, most of our day is communication one kind and another. Uh, it's one of the reasons why in COVID, employers, so many of them are able to um, use remote workers, leave people at a distance. And it's the same way in our personal lives too. So if someone were to take a good look at our communication. What, what might that look like? Now, 24 hours of what we say, of what we type, what's in our texts, emails, social media. What is, what is 24 hours of outgoing communication from us look like, sound like. Now, work is work. But in our professional lives, we could think about content. Is this family? Is this concern for others? Is this really genuinely wondering how the other person is doing? Are we mirroring society so that it's just one great tidal wave of politics? Trump this and Pelosi that? Besides content, there's tone. What's it sound like? In this country, we have an entertainment industry and we have different other parts of our society that seem pretty much to be entirely in the business of pointing out the shortcomings of everybody, living and dead. Intelligent people can almost always think of something negative to say if that's, if that's where our hearts are at, if that's where our minds are at. Just look around, we can, we can think of something negative to say. But that's not where Paul was when he told the Ephesians, don't let evil words pass your lips. Say only the things 
that will help your brothers and sisters. The things they need to hear. Look at Jeremiah, our first reading today. He's got a problem. He talks to the Lord about it. His problem is that he's been called to prophesy, but the word of the Lord has brought him derision and reproach all the day. So he wants out. He would like to resign as prophet, but he can't. I say to myself, I will not mention the Lord. I will speak in his name no more. Then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. Now we're not, most of us, called to prophesy or to have a public ministry of, uh, of that sort. And daily conversation, will have only a limited amount in it that's explicitly about the Lord. But what we talk about and how we talk about it should implicitly be filled with the love of a Christian man or woman. You think about Paul, again, in our Second reading here. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. That's not a call to become Amish. It's not a call to flee the world. but it's a call to look at the world and interact with the world in a whole nother way. The Lord turns the world upside down in our gospel here. He chastises Peter for thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. And a moment later, he says, what, what profit would there be for one to gain the whole world? Forfeit his life. Other translations are more specific. Forfeit his soul. That's what Aquinas was thinking of. When he said once that the salvation of one soul is a greater work than the creation of the universe. At work, we might have a time motion study. In our life, in our communications, we might have a content tone analysis. What would someone hear if they just listened to us over a good period of time? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it family? Politics? Is it light? Is it darkness? Is it interesting? Is it about truth? Are we problem solving? Is it positive? Is it teaching? Is it joyful? Or is it something else? And do we ever mention the Lord? May God bless you. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus, I God, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers to a loving God. For church leaders, may the Holy Spirit continue to help them persevere in the faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Our prayer. For civic leaders, may they seek God's wisdom in their decision making, especially in regards to protecting the sanctity of all life at all stages. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Our prayer. For those in the world affected by the coronavirus in some form, especially those who have lost a family member, that they find solace and comfort from their pain and grief in God's arms. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish who are suffering from illness of body, mind, or spirit, especially Don Allen and Dan Urbane, that the Lord will grant them consolation, strength, and healing from their afflictions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the hope of the resurrection of Christ, especially the holy souls in purgatory, and Sean G. Powers, that one day they may see the Lord face to face in the eternal gates of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of all our parishioners, those who are watching our broadcast, those who have asked us to pray, and those for whom we have promised to pray, those we hold within our hearts, and those we offer now in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our Lord, these and all the prayers we hold in our hearts, we ask it to grant according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is Take Up Your Cross, found on page four of your worship aid. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Pray the glory of the name for our good and all of the church. 
be this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit, we become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Martha and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever Amen. the peace of the lord be with you always with your spirit Those who are visiting this evening um, in this time of COVID, uh, St. Martha, we will uh, come to you for communion rather than have people process up. Deacon Carl and I will start in the middle aisle and we'll work our way out to the sides. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to shed under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be.
Praying in him is always a holy or breath of God, which is found on pages number four and five of your worship team. <laughs>
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple things. Um, the event, September 11th and 12th, uh, the John Paul II Healing Center, um, is one week closer than when we talked about it a week ago. Um, I, in talking about it previously, left out one minor detail, which it costs money and tickets aren't entirely cheap. Um, so, but if you, if you take a look at it, I think you'll still find it a very worthwhile. It's a Friday evening, Saturday afternoon, kind of a mini mission, uh, but it's around healing. It's around the stuff we've been carrying around that we might do well to, to name and, and begin to address for our own good and the good of those who are in relationships with us. Last, the next thing, um, the parish auction. You may remember the wonderful party we had last November, uh, early November. Um, we can't do that this year. Um, we will do it and we've got the date set and we will be in the stadium at the Huntington Club in November of 2021. But this year, uh, we're gonna be having to do a different kind of a fundraiser. It's, um, as you know, the auction proceeds go to support our ministries to the young, uh, the school, the religious ed, the youth group, um, and the need is as great or greater in these days. So you'll hear more about this as we go along. Um, everybody who's here this evening and those of us who are watching on uh, YouTube or on Facebook, um, you've been enjoying this heavenly music. Um, Michaela Stiles is on her way back to Hillsdale after this weekend. Um, uh, we hope to have her around at, you know, in the future, but uh, she's got uh, senior year in college, and so uh, um, just savor what you hear. You're, the closing hymn is uh, three verses of the diocesan anthem, O God Beyond All Praising. So, uh, uh, Enjoy the music, but take a look at the lyrics too. The, the lyrics of our closing hymn really are profound. The Lord be with you. With your spirit, sir. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeing the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. 